Hi, this is Jean Jacques Taylor, and you're listening to Jot Talk. This is a podcast where I talk about the Cowboys, the team I've covered as a beat writer, columnist, TV insider, and radio host for 28 years. I'll also talk about the NFL and the things I love working out, streaming, food, and all things down. Welcome to Jock Talk, where sports is fluid. What's true today might not be true an hour, a day, or a month from now. I'm going to give you the truth straight, no chaser. Glad to have you aboard. Let's get it. Welcome to episode 89 of Shock Talk. I'm John Shock Taylor, joined by my boy Big Joe and the Big Rig. We hope you are prepared to be entertained and dazzled for the next hour or so. What's the sit report, dog? Well, you're going to get it right one of these days. Hey, man. Hey, <laughs> uh, <yeah>. you know. <laughs> it is, we are, it's, the light is red, and we are five by five, my friend. That's all I care about, you know. 89, who comes to mind? To me, it can only be the one and only David LaFleur. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. How about Billy Joe Dupree? How about that? All right. David okay, LaFleur. Right. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. Uh, First round uh, pick out of LSU, 6'8". Bad back. Yep. Never really a uh, Peter drop. Had one good game against Cincinnati, caught two touchdown passes, and uh, we never heard anything else. They was comparing him to Tony. It was the same draft as uh, Tony Gonzalez. Yeah, it was because uh, they were hoping Gonzalez would fall to them, but uh, he never had the chance to fall that low. Roger so they that. ended up taking Lafleur. Uh, that was the year Troy traipsed around the country working out players, which is really kind of funny if you think about it. Like we don't trust our scouting department, so we're gonna have Troy walk around and do our job. Uh, interesting. But uh, speaking of the Cowboys, let's give Clarence e. Hill Jr. a call. He's brought to you each and every Friday. Smokey John's Barbecue right there at 1820 West Mockingbird. Did you see the love that you got on Twitter or X yesterday, dog? Uh, no diddy. <laughs> what does that mean? Same thing as pause. Oh. Mm-hmm. What's going on, fellas? <laughs> What's up, man? How you rolling? I'm fine. What's going on with y'all this morning? I don't know. I had, to hit, him. I had to hit him with the stop sign already, but it's all good. Oh. <laughs> Let's welcome Clancy Hill Jr. to the show. Longest tenured beat writer of the Cowboys of Dallas Fort Worth. The East stands for what, Joe? Every time you say that slogan, <laughs> I want to put your ass in a chokehold. <laughs> One don't have nothing to do with the other. I don't know what slogan you're talking about now. So, I mean, it's it's uh, it's Smokey John's barbecue. The food is so good, it's love in your mouth. And yeah, he don't like that slogan. I thought it was great. What you see that? <laughs> see what I'm saying? I had to hit him with the I had to hit him with the no diddy. <laughs> he talking about what do that mean? It's the same damn thing as pause. It's what you need to do. Pause. With he don't that. know what. He don't keep up with current events. Not now. He don't know what no, not now he don't. If you don't know what no did it means, that's that's the that's new that's the new no homo. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> I told you Paul is the same thing as Paul. I mean, I don't even want to go down that road because no good can come from going down that road. Yeah. Well, I mean, You're already <laughs> going down that road. <laughs> no, you, that, that, you've been going down that road. That's no, that's no. the new colloquialism for no homo. Yeah. All right, well I think that's yeah, I, yeah. On another note, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I found this very interesting. Uh, yes, sir. And it's, it's this that Don Van Adder, the investigative reporter for ESPN, mm. who's damn good at what he does, um, is writing an unauthorized biography on Jerry Jones. Now, let me tell you how this works out there in podcast land. When you're doing a book like that, even if it's unauthorized, you can go to Jerry and say, hey, Jerry, I'm doing this book on you. Love to talk to you. And Jerry can say, hey, I give you some time. No problem. Uh, let's set up some, some, some meetings. Or he can say, hey, I really don't want anything to do with it, but good luck to you. Or he can say, I don't want you doing it. I ain't talking to you. And I'm telling all my people not to talk to you. Um, and so my question is, which approach do you think Jerry will take with this book? Now, before you answer, I'm going to lay one more thing on there. I had the briefest, 
And when I say the briefest, I mean like 30-second conversation about would I be interested in writing a Jerry Jones book after I finished the Dion, the book on Dion Sanders that dropped in October. Right. And my answer to the publisher, I mean to the editors, were no, because one, to do that book right, you need about three years to do it. And to do it right, you need to have a real understanding of how to get court records and court documents. Because right. if you're going to tell the story, you got to tell the whole story that Jerry don't want you to know about. And you can only get that through court documents to me. So now that I've given you all that background, which approach do you think Jerry's going to take to this book? Oh, I, I don't think Jerry's going to cooperate. I mean, you got to understand, Renata is the one who's been writing a lot of the stories about his daughter, certainly about the stuff with what it what it, both daughters actually. Right. Uh in regards to the Rich Dalrymple stuff. Uh so uh and, and he's written some other stuff before on the Cowboys. Um so I don't think he's in good standing with the Jones family. Yeah. And so no, I don't I see Jerry to I don't see Jerry cooperating. Now, the problem for Jerry will be, one, he didn't talk to Van Atta so much over the years that I'm sure he's got plenty of uh, interviews. Because people that investigate reports like that, they don't throw nothing away. He got plenty of interviews over the years. And the other thing is, because he's in the court system, he's going to get it all, and he gonna have you, he's going to have your version of it in, in the court documents. And to me... You ain't even writing this story unless you're going knee deep in the court documents. And that's all the stuff we know about. And we all know that if you're talking about Jerry Jones, there's so much stuff that you ain't never even heard about that got paid off that we'll find about. Oh, there's no question. You know, those are some of the things, some of the things I think about Trump. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there that we don't know. And, uh, and especially from the 70s and 80s and you know, the wild, <laughs> wild world. Yeah, I forgot about you know. that. Jerry did have a life before he bought the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah nah, so it's, uh, you know, it's it's it, it, it's all interesting, and you know, it could go in any different direction. And so it's like I said, you know, that that's the type of book you know that a Van Atta can write if you don't have to deal with Jerry on a daily basis. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, for you say you're doing it, then you know, depends on how the book comes out. You know, you may not be. You know, have the same privileges than you have going forward. <laughs> of course, you might, make, you might make enough money for the book where you don't need them, but I mean, those are two different right. things. Right, you know, right, so right. you know, those are you know that's why a lot of times people write books after they finish covering the team, or when they're out outside of covering yeah. the team, you can write books on the team, but not when you're you know out there on a daily basis. It's just, it's just tough to keep those same relationships. You know, when you when you write books like that. If you but, write uh, the truth. I mean. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. If you're gonna write, there's no reason to write it. You're not gonna write the truth. Correct. Uh, you know, um, so it's gonna be interesting. Obviously, you know, Venata is gonna be a good book. It's gonna be a thorough book, and you know, it's it's, it's gonna take a fine to comb up Jerry's butt. No, no, did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I have no words for that. I'm a, yeah. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna move on from that. I mean, uh, well, know, played. well played, well played, my friend. Well played. Exactly. It's all, it's all on the same family. We stand in the same, <laughs> the same arc. Uh, hey, Cowboys had a huge signing the other day. They signed a swing tackle. What do you think about that move? I mean, really, we, we're doing this. Um, is, is, is this what we're doing? Just to pose that, but what the Texans did. So the Cowboys, you know, signed Chuma Go Adogo, who really basically a backup tackle who has no guarantees of making out of training camp on <laughs> Wednesday. You know, just hours after the Texans make this blockbuster trade uh, for Stephon Diggs. You know, in, in another example of a team going all in, you know, you know, to win this year, you know, and, and the Texans are doing that. They, you know, you look at all the moves they've made from their signings. I mean, you know, they, they are an example of a team that hey, we were good last year. We took a step. We got a rookie quarterback. We trying to make it happen. We trying to win now. Uh, and the Cowboys, to Jerry Jones, say we're all in. You know. They're they're shopping at the bargain bins, bargain bins again, you know. And look at all their signings, you know. 
they've only signed one outside free agent, you know, for three million dollars, and everybody else has been getting the minimum salary or re-signs guys who are largely backups. I mean, they've only signed or re-signed one guy who is a projected starter, you know, and and they lost at least four starters, if not five, in free agency. Now you know I'm not one to panic, and I'm not I'm one to say, hey, we don't even know who's on the team yet. But I gotta tell you, even if you look at the draft, there's not gonna be no whole bunch of dudes you're gonna sign after the draft. It doesn't look. If I have a hard time seeing how they're a better team next year than yeah, that, that, in the last couple of years, and I think that's my issue right now as I start to look at them. Yeah, and that's the problem is that you look at what the Cowboys still have. They still have the best quarterback in the division. They still have you know, uh, one of the best receiver in the division. They, they still have one of the uh, up-and-coming tight end. They still have the best kicker in the division, possibly, or one of the best kickers in the division. The dude with the Eagles is very good. Uh, still have the best pass rush in the division, possibly the best cornerback duo in the division. You know, they still have eight or nine Pro Bowls on this team. So this team is going to be competitive. But the question is, can they be better? Can they take the next step? And I, I think that they may, you know, you can see some Sam Williams of guys within where they can tread water and, 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 and come up to the same level as they were last year, possibly if all things go right. But that was never the charge. You know, the charge in 2024 was Mike McCarthy on the final year of his deal, Dak Potts on the final year of his deal, the whole coach that on the final year of his deal, was, is to get to the, championship game on the Super Bowl. That's the charge. You know, for Mike McCarthy, certainly to keep his job. Right. You know, and, and how do you do that without improving your team? They are not better. You know, they can talk about, you know, the round on drafting guys and, and, and development and second year jumps. Yeah, that, that could possibly get you back to where you were. What makes you better? What makes you better fit, better suited to take the next step? Right. And they've done nothing to be better. Like, um, when I look at last year, I go, they went and acquired Brandon Cooks. They went and acquired Stephon Gilmore. And then you said, okay, I see now how it could be better. Uh, but they haven't done that this year. And so it's like, as good as they are in the draft, you hate to get in a situation where you, 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 you expect draft picks uh, to play at the highest of levels, even if they first or second rounders. Uh, this has this team has a good track record to draft them, so you expect a certain standard. But we saw last year, it don't it don't always happen like that, and so uh, they haven't given themselves much of a uh, safety net to be better. And uh, I don't want to say it seemed like they just like ah it's whatever next year, but it sure got that feel to it. Yeah, it's it, you know I, I would hate to be in my McCarthy position, um, because you know here's a guy who's literally coaching for his job and, and, and they're giving him less tools to work with. <laughs> That's a trip. Those, those, those are the facts. He's coaching. And I know Mike McCarthy wanted to keep Hankins. I know Mike McCarthy wanted to keep Tony Pollard. I know Mike McCarthy, you know, was hoping that they would get the DAC deal done, you know, so they could clear the cap room to, to, to sign other players. None of that happened. Now they say, you, now it's on the coaches. You guys do it. You and Zimmer, you, you just out scheming with these guys. It's on you. <laughs> now, Hank is I mean, didn't even cost that much. I, I, I know. It, 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 it's, it's ridiculous. You know, I, I don't know. If you can't, if you couldn't pay two million for Hank, you wouldn't try. You know, no. and, and, and so it, 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 none of it, you know, they say they want to keep Hankins, but based on the contract Hankins got, they're, 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 it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add no. up. You know, no. one plus one is not two in that scenario. No. Uh, but, no. But getting back to the draft, I mean, it seemed like, they're putting a lot of pressure on Will McClay to, to, to hit home runs. And it's, and it's well documented the Cowboys have drafted well and Will McClay has drafted well, but they don't hit, you can't hit home runs. You know, you can't bat a thousand in draft. It's just not realistic. And as you pointed out, look at last year's draft. You know, you can talk about the Tyler Smiths and all the other picks before that, but but you should have expected more from Mozzie Smith. You didn't get it. And, and you didn't get anything from uh, the second round pick from Michigan either. You know, and, and, and that's part of the draft because there's no perfect drafts. I mean, you do make mistakes. Look at all the quarterbacks that have been can't miss prospects, 
you know, who are with other teams or, or fail. I mean, you, you look at, you know, uh, the, the Trey Lance with the Cowboys now and what the 49ers did, a great organization who, who knows players and move, you know, made those trades to draft the guy in the first round and then get rid of him two, you know, two years later and, 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 and fall into a guy as Mr. Irrelevant, you know, which tells you all you need to know about, you know, the fickleness of the draft and draft picks. That's a good way you to know, which, fickleness. Yeah, it's fickle. I mean, you you, you know, you, you, there, there's no guarantees. Just like recruiting and everything, there's no guarantee that five star gonna be that five star. There's no guarantee that first round pick is gonna be that first round pick. You know, and, and so um, that's a lot of pressure. I, I would say that along. Look, I look, I like the way the Cowboys are, are drafted, develop team, but drafted and develop alone does not win Super Bowls. You, you, there's a reason why you have trade. You have to supplement what you do in the draft. Uh, with trades, with free agency, other ways to improve this team. And and, and they just basically punt in free agency every year. You know, and then we give them credit for uh, what they did last year, going to get Cooks and, and going to get Gilmore, but they gave us it, – it's not like they really invested a lot. Yeah, they still gave late-round draft picks. Yeah, they, they you know, they didn't invest a lot. I mean, but, yes, they – they made key moves to add to what they have, but that just shows you how bad the receiving call was the year before, which, you know, which was CD and a bunch of maybes, which I, <laughs> you know, and, and, and listen, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's, 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 it's ridiculous. Uh, what, what the, you know, again, what Mike McCarthy and what, you know, all the pressure, and again, at the end of the day, you know who's going to get the blame, Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott. Yeah, because at the end of every year, there's a scapegoat. It ain't never going to be Jerry. It ain't never going to be Steven. But at the end of the year, there's always a scapegoat. And that scapegoat gets fired, whether it was Kevin Kellen Moore a couple of years ago or whether it was uh, your boy Dan Quinn last year, even though he got a job, he was going to have to get up out of here because somebody got to pay the price for the season that ended in disappointment. Um, now, what? Clarence, one of Clarence's talents <clears throat> is that he is the Zeke whisperer because he got a great <laughs> relationship with Zeke's agent. Uh, what is this conversation about Zeke potentially coming back? Archer, we talked to him on Wednesday, and he tried to talk me into why it was a good deal. And I was like, I guess, man, but I don't know about spinning the block with Zeke. It seems like it's a it's a backward move, although I guess I could make it make sense. Well, so I guess for you, the question is, 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 it, is it what are the odds of him returning? And then what do you think about that move? Well, the odds are high. You know, it's just a matter of when. Uh, there's interest on both sides. Uh, and, of course, as I always say, or Archie would say, you know, everybody's unemployed wants to have a job. So interested, anybody that's interested in that. Okay. So he did, no he did mention that a couple times. <laughs> you know. <laughs> he did mention that. You know, and so, and especially when it's the Cowboys. But, you know, his home is here. His parents have moved here. His sister went to SMU Law School. Yeah, Zeke would want to come back to the Cowboys. He didn't want to leave last year, you know, but he, he would want to come back to the Cowboys. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, whatever the role is, you know, it just depends on how much you pay. Again, the Cowboys are not paying a lot of money. You know, Zeke going to have to, you know, if, is, is he is he going to take the veteran minimum? He's going to hold out and, and, and wait till somebody else calls him? You know, we'll see, you know. You know, but but there is certainly some 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 smoke there that that's legitimate, that, that, that there's an interest on both sides, whether the Cowboys wait till after the draft to do this. You know, remains to be seen. Uh, again, there's still no guarantees he makes the roster in August if he does sign. You know, just because you know of his age and you know, his position. Again, you're talking about a who a person of a, a, a former two time versus champ who would be a part time back uh, and doesn't play special teams. So you you know you certainly have to carve out snaps and a role for for somebody like that. Uh, he did average just three point five yards to carry. His yards to carry has continued to come down. You know, since his heyday, uh, why would it be a good move? Because the Cowboys could have used Zeke last year as, as a goal line back. You know, they could have used him. You know, he did score 12 rushing touchdowns the year before. You know, and, right. and, and one thing they were missing was that goal line back or, or that, 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 that hammer, you know, on short yardage situations. The interesting, the interesting thing to me is that, you know, I spent last week with Jerry Jones uh, at the owners' meetings, and Jerry Jones – Continue to hammer the cap, the cap, the cap, and the financial situations and what they have to go through and how they're paying guys who are no longer on the team. You know, 
And one thing that kept coming up in my mind is Zeke. Zeke is counting six million against the cap this year. <laughs> and you talk whether he's on the team or not. So right. now you're going to essentially, you know, just from, <laughs> from a accounting standpoint, pay him twice. That's such a Cowboys thing, though. You know, if you bring him back, if you bring him back, you're paying him twice. Let me interject here. One of the best quotes you ever had on this show right here is you said, fans don't give a damn about the cap. Y'all quit talking about the cap and let's let's do some damn thing. I always like that. And that's what yeah, get on my course. nerves about them. They just cap, cap, cap. We don't care about that, man. We just want, you know, we want you to do what you said you was going to do. Yeah, so I asked you yeah, to go yeah. all in. Yes, you, and, and you're exactly right. And, and so from a, you know, it's it just, you know, and I know it has nothing to do with nothing. You know, the Cowboys paid a hundred million dollars for Comstock resources. You know, this other thing off the field. One reason why Jerry Jones just announced is, you know, I think the the, the second richest person in the NFL. Okay, right. they got money coming out every hole. No, 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 did Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, hey, hey, he beating that horse to death. Go ahead. You know, they, they got money coming out of every hole. <laughs> But yet, when it comes to the football team, and it's understand one has nothing to do with the other, but from a Cowboys standpoint, fan standpoint, is it's hard to reconcile the money you're making off the field with you not being able to pay guys on the field. It's hard to reconcile, you know, you so worried about balancing the budget, not wanting to kick the cannon or not wanting to get the cap hell when you got more money than God allows. You know, and I understand from a business standpoint, you got to do things to make yourself sovereign and, and efficient. And, and, you know, you want to be able to run your organization in an efficient way. That sounds good. That's great. You've done that well. Well, better than most. You know, right. you still have not won and been to the Super Bowl since 1996. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it's been a minute. <laughs> you know, you still have not been to the Super Bowl since 1996. You know, so... You know, your ability to be solvent and, and efficient with cash flow and, and the cap, you know, you want a cookie? Yeah, we don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we tired of hearing that, man. As a, as a, as a Cowboy fan, I'm tired of hearing cap, cap I, talk. I am curious, man. What do you think their obsession with that is? Because there's an opportunity to win that you may not always have. And um, is it the fact that they try not to crater? They just they're okay with a down year if it's an eight and nine, a nine and eight year. Well, I mean, I don't, don't think they're okay with. Me. I don't think they're okay with a down year, which is the problem. Because if you're okay with a down year, then you will just blow it up and start over. You know, which if you want to really get out of the cap situation and, and be solvent again, you got to blow it up and start over. You know, but they're not. Yeah. They're never going to blow it up and start over. You know, and and Jerry don't want. The empty seats at AT and T Stadium. You know, he he wants to continue to be a competitive team. When he wants to continue to be on TV, you you, you guys talking about. Him. I think he liked it. First of all, this whole thing is, it, you know, Jerry may be playing us again because Jerry loves to be talked about. And <laughs> I mean, it was last week. There was more talk about Dak Prescott than Caitlin Clark last week on on all those talk shows. Some people right. still got the Cowboys in their mouth. No diddy. Mm. But, uh, <laughs> mm. I mean, but, the, but you look at, you know, whether it's first tag, whether that's all they are talking about, continually talking about it, continue to be conversations. And, you know, that Jerry got, oh, he's going to let Dak walk. Oh, he's going to let Dak walk. And, you know, Jerry might come in for a training camp in the season and sign back to the contract, and we, he got you again. So, because the more you talk mm. about it, you know, the more it keeps his name and line by it more. You know, people are interested in what's going on in the Cowboys, more keeps them the headline news, more, you know, it just could cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching to the bottom line, I suppose. Uh, but at the end of the uh, day, you, see it? you know, but at the end of the day, what does that have to do with it? That's going to be on the team, whether you sign to a contract or not. You know, um, CD's going to be on the team, whether it gets the contract extension or not in 2024. Right now, there's yeah. nothing you can do to add to what you already have because Freddy's is over. Right. Uh, you see any way that they don't draft a uh, left tackle in the first round? 
Well, it depends on who's there. I mean, you know, a lot of the guys who could be there and many left tackles could be gone. Uh, you know, there's a lot of offensive line, but there's not a lot of, you know, the, the number of left tackles, I suppose, is, is not what you think it is. And certainly you're not going to get a Tyler, a Tyron Smith in the first round, you know, where they're picking. You know, Tyron Smith will pick in top 11 for a reason. You know, uh, but certainly that's the goal. It's, 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 it's going to be a tackle. It's going to be guards. It's going to be a center. It's going to be offensive lineman for sure. You know, but they're also going to take every a running back at some point. They got seven running backs who are visiting the, you know, the Cowboys this week. You know, it, it's a primary focus to get a running back in. So we talk about Zeke, but the starting back will likely be somebody in the draft. Right. Um, you know, you got to go down the uh, you, 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 you want to add a veteran to the mix for sure. But, you know, they're focused on getting the running back. They're focused on getting the offensive lineman. Uh, linebacker is another position that they're focused on getting in the draft. And, and certainly we know they can use another receiver and another cornerback and, and, and right down the line. Um, I, saw, I think Field Yates from ESPN put out a mock. He did the Cowboys trading out of 24, moving down. I saw somebody else's mock who's I can't remember. They had the Cowboys moving down a couple of spots. It seems to me if you try and get a tackle, there's only a handful of left tackles on there that you're not necessarily moving down. Uh, I well, know yeah, all things yeah, are possible, yeah. but. Well, again, as I was trying to say, it depends on who's available. You know, all the guys, like the kid from Georgia, has played nothing but right tackle his entire career. You know, do you exactly. draft him to play left tackle? Hell no. Okay, so, you know, it, it just depends on who the, I mean, there are a lot of offensive linemen, but there's not necessarily a lot of left tackles who are worthy of that pick, depending on where they fall. You know, so you got to see, let the draft come to you and see see what's available. And then, you know, if, if no left in the center is gone or whatever else, and, uh, you know, you're certainly not taking a running back there. Do you, you know, do you need, do you want to take another first round receiver, cornerback? You know, you may move down to add to your chances to get somebody else, you know, get, get a higher second round pick, higher third round pick, you know, just to add to your heart because you need players. I mean, you look at, you look again, because of what the Cowboys did for the they only have seven draft picks. You know, they could add, they, they, they certainly, most certainly could want to add to their draft hall. Right. I get it. I get it. Uh, as we shift topics here, you know that everybody, um, the uh, the Dallas Mavericks are one of the hottest teams in the NBA. The Dallas Stars, for those of you who like hockey, are one of the hottest teams in the NHL, tied for the uh, league lead in points in the President's Cup. Um, do you miss that excitement with Dallas Cowboys? Because you, these other teams you, are making moves you, you gonna, and positioning themselves for championships. Are you going to get the rain? I mean, I haven't forgotten the rain. I, I, you know, that was, that was kind of understood. Okay. The well, I'm just saying, but, but the, the other teams are getting ready for the playoffs, and the Rangers are just starting. But, they, but they're coming off a championship. Yeah, but I mean, in those teams, you know, at least the Stars and the Rangers are really built to win for a minute. I can never figure out what the Mavs because you know they fluctuate quite a bit, but they could be. I mean, you know, I, mean, so I don't know about the Mavs long term. I know the Rangers. They were in the cover title term. game two years ago. We, we, we forget that almost. Uh, I ain't forgot it. They just. Uh, I, Mavs fortunes to me depend on Kyrie. If Kyrie's going to hang around for another two or three years, then they're going to be in the mix. Um, if not, they'll kind of go back to what they were, which is a slightly above average team with a, with a superstar. But does it seem weird that everybody else seemed like they got a championship plan? And the Cowboys seem that I just don't have I don't see the plan. Like the plan well, could not work. You could take a shot and plan not work, but I don't even really see their plan. You know, it's funny because I would say that going into the playoffs last year, most people thought they had a shot. Right. You know, they were the second seed. Right. You know, we, we, we you know, they we forget they were the second seed. They got upset. They they were the second seed. They right. they had it was their best shot to get to a championship game than they've had in a long time. Correct. And and so I think there was some sort of excitement surrounding that. 
the, the problem is that the gut punch after the loss, it makes it seem like, you know, there's a thought process that Cowboys suck and have sucked. And there's yeah, been see, no that hope. Not, it's, that's, that's incorrect. I, and, and I know that's my point. That's incorrect. They, they've been contenders. You know, they've been perennial contenders. They, they won more games the last three years than anybody except the Chiefs. Well, that's, 12 that's and five, be, 12 and five, 12 and five. I, mean, I know it don't mean nothing. That'd be called the division suck. It don't matter. Well, we everybody well, for it, years. Yeah, but I I'm mean, saying you can get you, been, can, you can stay mediocre and still win. You can beat the Giants twice and beat the Redskins twice and then they're, get they're, your they're, ass out of the division and get, get, get molly whopped. They're, so, they're not the only team who played in the bad division. I know, but I mean, I'm the, talking about the, my the, team. The, I'm talking about the Cowboys. I, I understand that, but my point is just to say the division sucks, well, the, the, the NFC West sucked last year. Then nobody mm. go twelve and five. Okay, mm. the AFC West. I mean, South sucked. I mean, not that West. The NFC South sucked last year. The AFC South sucked last year. You know, you know, they all didn't go twelve and five. I mean, you, okay. you, you still have to. You same still have thing, to, Same thing. Different day. Go twelve and five again. I, get your ass kicked in the playoffs, and it's all good. I, 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 I understand. I'm just saying though, they they have been contenders. They they have been contenders. So the idea that they have a had a plan to have to make contenders, I think, is is, is wrong. The, the problem is, is that there's no belief in them. You know, the, the disillusionment. Yeah, I, I think I just the, said the, that. I was, I, was talking, I was asking Josh's question that just opposed to what he was talking about with the Mavs and, and the Stars and their, yes. the excitement surrounding what they're doing. And, you know, so I think the, I think that there's been, they have been contenders. It's, it's at this point that Nobody believes they're going to do anything, and well, I think and, and that's there's no that their peer they were contenders last year. I don't think anybody's disputing that. Yeah, but as you move into the next season, there doesn't appear to be a real plan for this team that's coming up. Like, okay, I yeah. get last year, but the the lack of a plan is what troubles me. Like, you well, know, I mean, and you don't. I mean, whether you were, I mean, they just, I don't know what they're doing. And so if you don't know what they're doing, that leads to what you just said. How can I have faith and belief when I don't know what right. you're doing? Unless we're talking about religion, which is all based on just faith and hope. Yeah, you know, as Bill Purcell said a long time ago, you know, potential is based on demonstrated ability. You know, what's the demonstrated ability to do more than what they've done? You know, they, they have, there's, there's they, they, we we don't know what they can do, and I think it, it comes from how the season ended. The Cowboys still don't know what happened against Green Bay. They are still <laughs> outside their minds on how they can go and put a put a performance like that. And everything they've done in off season explains that they just have no idea how to move forward and take it to the next level. And certainly, you know, Jerry's talked about you know uh, the cap and and the money and, and how they're constrained by that and and. Certainly, they're, they're internally, they're, they're trying to be positive regarding the guys they do have come in. As I pointed out, you know, you, this is not a team without players. It's not a team without talent. It's not a team that can't contend based on what they have. They're going to be competitive. You know, just from the outside standpoint, is there's no hope that these no, guys have not shown an ability to up to, 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 to uplift lesser teammates. You know what they don't have, dog? I'm saying, I just, I, I'm not really breaking news, but I don't think we've talked about it in this context. Real talk. Why did the Rangers win the World Series? Why are they champions? Because guys like Nate Valdi and Corey Seager were like, yo, and, and Araldus uh, Garcia, at the, at the moments where they mattered, they're like, hey, don't worry about it. We got this thing. Mon- Jordan Montgomery. Those guys, while everybody else was trying to figure out what to do, with the biggest moments in their games, they delivered the biggest hits or the biggest plays. And when the Cowboys have been in the playoffs at the biggest moments in the games, their best players have delivered virtually nothing. And I think when we just sit back and think about it, that's kind of like the difference. You know, your, your best dudes, we've said, have got to perform. But they've gotten, you know, either average or less than average performances from their three or four best guys. Whereas if you look at Rangers, almost all of their best guys performed at the highest level when it mattered most. Right. And, and best guys, best coaches, and coaches put them in position to do that. I mean, 
one of the things that's, that's, that's most disheartening to the Cowboys, just from my conversations, is the defense. And, and then we're going back to Dak Quinn. And then we can talk about Dak all we want to. But they really felt that they were going to get back in the game in the second half. And the fact that the defense got no stops in the third quarter is just, they, they're just mystified. Yep. And they could not get back in the game in the, in the third quarter. You know, Mike McCarthy thought that, hey, we're going to have a chance. We'll go down there and score. We're going to have a chance of going overtime and tie this game up on the last possession. And the fact that they could never stop them is 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 something that they this does not sit well. Yeah, we talked about it all year because they was front runners all year. You know, the Cowboys was a front running team all year. No, there's no question about that. I'm just talking about that game though. They the offense got it together and battled back to 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 to, to put the points on the board, and and they. They were hoping that that defense would at least bow up. And they did not bow up at all. No. You know, the quarterback had them their perfect quarterback rate. Yeah. Running back ran through holes, you know, you know, like Emmitt Smith back in the day. <laughs> you got to yeah, stop something. Yeah, uh, no doubt. Uh, what do you, before we get up out of here, what are your thoughts on the tournament thus far? Man, which tournament? Because I'm more excited about the women than the men. And See, I, and I almost I got you. Been... I was really talking about the women's tournament. But, I mean, we... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I almost got you. Uh, you know, even though number one seed Texas fell, it's still been a good tournament. No, it's been a great tournament. And, and, and just Texas was number one seed, but they were, you know, a dark horse anyway. I mean, the, 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 the stars have prevailed outside of, you know, NC State. But, you know, you, you, the Angel Reese's and Caitlin Clark's and Juju and Paige Buckets and, you know, they, 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 they showed up. And that, that's why, you know, things are like I was telling, you know, I was talking to my coworker, Mac Engel, about this the other day. It's like, you know, listen, the midterm is going to be exciting because of the upsets and, and you got, and there's a great story with North Carolina State is doing with, 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 with my man DJ, big boy. Everybody loves that. DJ but we didn't know that dude's name. We did not, we didn't know that dude's name until two weeks ago. Yep. That's what I like about the tournament. It's always a star is born sometime. Okay, uh, it is born. But it, it, we didn't know what that dude's name was until we still, you know. But these women have built a platform mm-hmm. over the last three, four years. And they are household. And look at social media impressions. Look at, you know, everything else. The Paige Buckets, you know, Caitlin Clark, you know. Uh, uh, Alisa, Alisa and Peely. And you and your race. We, we know that. Party Crooks. Support. We know them going into the tournament. This is why they have the most ratings. I mean, everybody gets excited about the the LSU Iowa rating, which was the most effort. But right. the UConn USC game was higher rated in the Elite Eight than the UConn men's team in the Elite Eight, and the men's are defending national champions. <laughs> Go figure. The men are defending yeah. national champions, and the UConn women had a higher rated game on TV than, than, than the men in the league. And it's going to be the same in the Final Four. Uh, I just think the women are going to, you know, there's more interest in the women's game, you know. And right now, they're, they're, they're stars and people you want to see. Yes, the, 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 the average basketball, the regular basketball fan would love, you know, they love, they're going to watch the men's terms, they watch the men's terms. But the average Joe, people, on the street, it's like people are watching the women's tournament because those women are household names that you relate to. Uh, dude, LSU and uh, I was I was like set the thing. Hey, make sure reminding myself. Hey, the game come on. Make sure I watch the game. I ain't done nothing about the men's game yet. Uh, no, so. it's not because I mean they're good teams, but I can't name anybody of you can team. You know, me and Joe did this a couple weeks ago, and I felt bad at the start of the tournament. I was like, dude, how many? Men's college basketball players, can you name? And I was like, they got the big dude at uh, Purdue, Eddie something. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember, uh, whereas you know, I could name a whole bunch, but I could name several women's college basketball players. So yeah. it's just, it's just, uh, you know, kind of fascinating how the game has changed. Uh, yeah. One last thing. I mean, and, and the guys that you know, the guys that stay is because they ain't no good. I mean, you look at the North Carolina kid who's been there five years, Baycock. I know his name. But he's not going to be an NBA star. Right, right, right. 
No, and uh, you know we'd be lucky if we see DJ Burns in the NBA because at, uh, at his size, I don't know if he can make it happen uh, in yeah, today's yeah. NBA. Uh, did no, you read no, the? Yeah. Uh, did you read the Kim Mulkey story? I did. It was it was, it was nothing. It was, it was much to do about nothing. But whose fault is that? That's Kim Mulkey's fault. She made it into something. Oh, yeah, she made it into something. Because, again, if you read the story, you, read the story, you know why she made it into something. Because she wants to control everything around her. And she yeah. did not control the storyline. And there was nothing we didn't know. We know she's not a nice person. We know that she, you know, she's not she's loyal or not loyal or however you want to look at it. We know she had a problem with gay players. And, 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 and that's an issue. Uh, you know, she she didn't know what her dad or, you know, the family members were going to say. And so she did not have control over some of the people that were outside the purview to, 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 to give their opinions on who she was. And so that's why she felt it was going to be a hexing job. Right. Um, you know, and, it, and, and again, it's like anything, like the Van Nata thing, you know, it's like, you know, the local papers in, in Waco and the local papers in Baton Rouge are not going to write this story. Because they got to deal with her on a daily basis. Because they got to deal with her. And, and so you're going to have a guy come in, I suppose, that can research and write that story. Yeah. yeah. I just thought it was interesting. I thought, uh, and this is the last thing I said, but I thought one of the things is as the women's game grows, and me and Joe talked about it a little bit, is they'll get more treatment in terms of the way the men get treated, in terms of media, and you it's the good and the bad. You have to accept it. If you want the growth that comes from the game and all the trappings, the money, the NIL that comes from the game, then you're going to have to take some of the, the BS that comes from the game, which is criticism and people writing things about you that you don't want written and digging into your background to figure out who you are and what you're all about because that's what media does uh, to its stars at its highest level. What do you think? Yeah, no, no question about that. That, 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 that. That's certainly that's part of it. You know, they'll treat you with it. With kid gloves, and she's used to being treated with kid gloves because they want coverage and all that other stuff. And you grow the game, but it's, yeah, certainly that's that 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 double edged sword of, of of fame is, is part of it. Yeah, that's that's like uh, Sam Macho saying that's saying what he said about Angel Reese the other day. It was yeah, it was. I I, I think he was wrong. Yeah, uh, he was. You know because that's Emmanuel to me, Macho, right? It was Manny. It was Manny. I, I think oh, he was wrong okay. because. No, Number one, for people to say, well, she wasn't crying after they won. She was crying after they lost. Well, first of all, is when you lose is when you take stock in your season. If you're the one, you've been prepared, you've been focused on the next game and the next hill of the conquer. So you don't mm-hmm. really have a time to get introspective on, on your journey. It's when your journey is over, you have no more games to play. And she was asked a question about her journey. It was after her teammates talked about her and what she meant that she reflected back. That is a time of reflection. That is a time when you can't get emotional. She was not showing regret. She was not denying who she was, but she can is allowed to be emotional about her journey. And to sit up here and say, well, you can't talk to talk and then, you know, sit up here. And that's, that's not right. That's not true. You do take stock in where you were and where you are when the season is over, when the journey is over. We have a time to reflect and look back. Well, Acho has become, in my opinion, a, a, just another, another. He used to be thought provoking to me. Now he's just another television talking head who screams and tries to yeah. get attention by what yeah. he says. Well, and he wants the attention. I mean, well, he's getting what he wants because the engagement, everybody's, you know, it's almost like Jerry Jones theory. You know, we're all talking about Acho. We're all listening to his podcast or, or, or looking at his clips because no one watches those shows. The only way you're going to watch those shows is what you see on social media when they put it out there. Yep. So now people have to click. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, anyway, man. We we always appreciate you coming on. Uh, that's Clarence E. Hill Jr. Love you, man. No diddy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> see that. <laughs> Ah, he, he, he always he in the he always in the ballpark with that shit, man. Always in the ballpark, dog. What you say with them double entendres and shit? There you yeah, go. He, 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 he finally gets it. Ain't gonna wear it out. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's gonna get wore out. You, no, no, you not, better no, believe not, that. No, you better believe no, that. He finna wear it out. Yeah, act like you know his ass. There you go. I know him. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh. Yeah, not in a biblical way. No diddy. Oh, my goodness. There you go. Man, I hate that I even said anything. 
<laughs> nah, I'm just playing. We're just having fun, man. All right, dog. Have a good one. Yeah. That's uh, Clancy Hill Jr. Uh, the E stands for entertaining each and every Friday on uh, Jacques Talk. Brought to you by Smokey John's Barbecue. Home of the Jam Session Bowl. It's on the secret menu. You got to know it's there. You can't just walk up and be looking on the menu for it because you won't find it. You have to know that it exists, and you know that it exists because you listen to the show. You follow us on IG and Twitter and X, all these other platforms where we talk about the Jam Session Bowl on a regular basis. Matter of fact, somebody hit me on X yesterday. I said, uh, Joe, a picture. They were talking about, hey, we just took a we just took a uh, had the jam session bowl at Smokey John's barbecue, and they said it, not me. They said it was love in your mouth, and so you know they enjoyed it. It was good. And jam session bowl for those of you who don't know, it's a bowl with a mac and cheese base or a mashed potato base, two out of five smoked meats, and then all the stuff you find on loaded baked potato, you know, like bacon bits and chives and cheese and butter. All that good stuff, sour cream. Then they either drizzle it with sauce or drench it with sauce. It's delicious either way. It's a jam session bowl. It's enough for two. Easy. Uh, you got a little short it. It's five or six to three of y'all. I promise you can eat off of it. And uh, everybody will be sleep coma full. That's how I wanted to say that. Uh, but uh, this jam session bowl is great. If you need some Smoky Johns in your life sooner than that, you can get the rub right here. Or the sauce. All you got to do is go to smokyjohns.com, click on the marketplace on the website. You can get it sent to your crib in a couple of days and enjoy it. If you got to have it before the end of the day, it says HEBs all over DFW. Waxahachie, McKinney, Allen, Burleson, Frisco, out there by the Cowboys. It's everywhere. Roll out there, pick it up, throw it on your popcorn, throw it on your chick, throw it on your chicken, throw it on your not your chick. Throw it on your burgers. It's all good. That's uh, Smokey John's Barbecue, home of the Jam Session Bowl, where the food is to live for. And it is. What is it, Joe? Delicious. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> we had mentioned this topic with Clancy Hill Jr., which was your streaking Dallas Mavericks. But before I get into that, I got to tell you, dog, um, I am a hockey guy. I enjoy hockey. Uh, I would watch more hockey, except I'm just going to go off. I was going to save this. Okay, I'm going I'm to try to save it for the block if I can. I'm getting a feeling that I can't, but I'm going to try. But I got to tell you, bro, Valley just make it so hard to do stuff that, uh, you know, I just haven't seen a lot of hockey. Uh, you know, I spent my formative years, I lived in Buffalo till I was about eight. So I grew up with the Buffalo Sabres and the great line of Rene Robert at right wing, Rick Martin at left wing, Gilbert Perrault, center iceman, also known as the French Connection, doing that thing, leading the Sabres to the Stanley Cup Finals in 1975 against the Broad Street Bullies, the Philadelphia Flyers with uh, Reggie Leach on one wing and Bobby Clark in the middle and Bernie Perron in center. So, see, I was a hockey guy. So I like hockey. I really do. Enjoy it. Love it. Um, but they make it so hard to watch these days, man. That being said, your Dallas Stars, man, it seemed like just a couple weeks ago they were struggling a little bit. They lost three out of four or four out of five or something. But I've been peeping them lately. Uh, have you paid any attention to the stars? No. Okay, fair enough. Um, this is all you need to know because they got uh, six games until the playoffs start. Right now, they are tied. Like they are tied with the Boston Bruins for the best record. I mean, for the most points in the National Hockey League. I mean, think about it. They got one hundred and three. And the uh, Bruins got 103. Boston is 44, 17, and 15. And uh, the Stars are 48, 19, and 9. As I like to say, no one has won more games than the Stars. They got 48 wins. But here, and we talked about this with Chill, man, but I want to put it in perspective. This is why the Stars are scary. Okay? Wyatt Johnson. Wyatt Johnson, y'all, is 20 years old. 
20. He leads the Stars with 30 goals. 20 years old. Uh, Jason Robertson, he kind of had his breakout year last year. He ain't but 24. He got 27 goals and leads the Stars with 77 points. Uh, but the Stars right now, man, they're doing it because they got what they always seem to have. Uh, they're, they're either first or second in the league in goals scored. And they got eight dudes, I'm sorry, seven guys with 20 goals or more. And Jamie Benn is right there at 19. And that means they got line versatility. You can't shut them down. They got a lot of guys who can score. They don't have anybody with more than 30, but they got eight, seven guys with 20 or more. And so they have very balanced offense, and that makes them hard to stop. And that's why they're going to be hard to stop in the playoffs because they don't have that one big line where you say, okay, if we shut down the, uh, this line, we can win. No, they, can, they got multiples. They can throw at you. They come in waves. And uh, they're going to be a tough out. The only thing about hockey is what? Man, that puck is crazy. And if you run into a hot goalie, I don't care how good you are, you got problems. Um, the good thing for the Stars is Ottinger, who's been – Ottinger had a great year last year. He's been kind of ah, mad this year. I mean, he's been good, but when the standard for him is so high to be great, and when he's good, you just kind of look at him like, ah, come on, dog, what's up, what's up? Well, he's rounding in for him, my brother. Um, he helped him uh, beat the Oilers last night. Oilers has second best, third best record in the uh, in the Western Conference. Uh, they beat them 5 nothing at the crib. Uh, they beat uh, Vancouver 4-1. to uh, <laughs> Somebody be jamming on their phone. Uh, beat them 4-1 to one the night before. So not only are they playing well right now, they're beating the best teams. And so, um, you know, Ottinger got his second shutout in a row. Uh, the Stars have won eight straight games. That's a franchise record. But it's not just that they won eight straight games. Check this out. Started last night, they beat the Oilers 5 nothing. Um, they beat the uh, Coyotes 5-2. to two. They beat the Kings 4-1. to one. Nah, that's my, uh, I'm sorry, that's my, that's my other list. Where is it? Oh, I'm sorry. They beat the uh, Kraken 3-0. That's why they got consecutive shutouts. Then they beat the Connects, who lead the Pacific Division 3-1. They beat the Sharks 6-3, Coyotes 4-2, Penguins 4-2, and uh, Coyotes 5-2 and the Stars 4-1. I mean, the Kings 4-1. So they've been blowing folks out. They're playing great hockey right now, and uh, they're not the team you want to play with right now. Here's the only thing. Hockey is crazy. When this first round series starts, you got to go start strong, start fast, and don't get that team no hope. You need to be up 2-0 at the crib and then go up 3-1 and then close it out 4-1 or 4-2, however it goes. Uh, that's the recipe for success. Um, and that's a good segue into your Dallas Mavericks, man. Um, did you watch the Warriors game the other day, the one that they lost? Yeah, a little bit. I just want to say that uh, before you find me, I I don't know what I don't, I'm a professional and my, my shit was on do not disturb, so I don't I don't I don't think I should be fined for that. I don't know what happened. Oh, you getting fined, man? You just like you tell your kids, hey, hey man. I understand you meant well, but there has to be some kind of uh, penance for your mistakes so that you understand not to do that again, and that's okay. So you're just going to find your game check <laughs> Yeah, keep it moving on. Yeah, Your check will be in the mail on May 1st because uh, we have forfeited April's check, even though it ain't arrived yet. How about that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, hell no. But anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. When you start off just like just like your kids, all else after that is bullshit. But all right. Go ahead. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, that game the other day, man, and this is uh, – this is what happens if you are an experienced sports watcher. If you really understand sports. There was nothing wrong with losing that game the other day to Golden State. And here's what I mean. Um, they played hard. They played pretty well. Uh, it was the last game, the fifth game in an 11-day road trip where they had gone west coast to east coast to west coast. They had Every available excuse 
to pack it in and not show up. And they turned them all down. And that, to me, was the most impressive thing. They was down 13, I think, in the third quarter. And they really could have said, you know what? We came out here. We put up a good fight. Warriors got the lead. We're going to take it to the crib. No. And so, to me, it's that fight that you want to see. And it's that fight that gives you hope for the playoffs because I'm telling you, that trade changed this team. And it's not that Gafford and uh, P.J. Washington are stars. They're not. It just gave the Mavericks what they needed. Um, it made them a, a versatile team. And somewhere in there, they found some fight. Because I don't think anybody looked at the Mavericks as a team that had a lot of fight in them. If the three-pointers were hitting, they won. If they weren't falling, they lost. And that, to me, is no longer the case. Gafford gives them something with with them nasty power dunks because they're not very artistic when he throws them down, but they are nasty and vicious. It's attitude, yeah. I think that's what it is, dog. Is that what I'm trying to put my finger on? Yeah, well, attitude. When they when they play like that, it says to me, and it says to me that they like playing together. You know, they like each other and they like playing together because you know. The best way to create dysfunction is when you're down by 13 and it's like, yeah, let's go home. Yeah. You know, when you're rallying like that, that means that you like that you actually like playing each other. With each professional thing, it's a personal thing. Let's, let's, let's get this. Let's do this. That's yeah. good team building right there. Right, and I, th- I, think, I think that's accurate. And I think that's why, yeah, nobody wants to lose, but the other teams are good. You're not going to win every game. Uh, the Warriors were also desperate. And But you made them work. And it took some really outstanding plays from the Warriors at the end to cash it out. Mavericks had a little bit of a cold streak where they missed three kind of wide open shots in a row. It's basketball. It happens. But I was much more impressed overall with the attitude, their approach. And to me, that bodes well for the playoffs. I don't think they're in position to get the, uh, the fourth spot. But I do think they can nail down the fifth spot if they just keep playing this way. Uh, They're going to end the season with the Hawks, the Warriors, the Rockets, the Hornets, the Heat, the Pistons, and then the last game against the Thunder, which, you know, may or may not mean something depending on where everybody is in in the playoff race. But they have a chance to put another streak together. I think of these last uh, six games, let's look at the last five because you're not sure what's going to happen with the Thunder game. They should probably either sweep those or go four and one. That's six games. They should either be five and one or six and zero oh in those games, based on the way they've been playing. Um, because uh, they got a three-game home streak stretch against the Hawks, the Warriors, and the Rockets. They should win all three of those. And then you go to Charlotte. You should win Charlotte. The Heat could be a little tricky. They're a good team. And then you end it with the Mavericks. I mean, with the Pistons. That to me says five and one. And that should be. Uh, and then we'll see what happens with Oklahoma City in the last game. Uh, five and one, though, should be enough to get you that fifth seed, which you know seemed like, damn, that's a long shot just a few weeks ago. Well, you uh, can you can be hot in the season at the end of the season, or you can play well at the end of the season. Hot oh, hot true. just means everything is working. When you play well, like you said, they playing together, they hustling, you know, they care about each other. It's good chemistry. You know what I'm saying? To me, that's a difference. Uh, no, nah, that's a that's another good thing you said. It's uh, it's the hustle to me. I see it. I see Luca. I've seen Luca dive on the floor more in the last uh, three weeks than I've seen him do all year. Not that I've seen every game. Yeah. But it's that hustle to me. It's that desperation, that urgency that when he plays like that, because we all know he's an offensive dude. He's not a defensive guy. He's not necessarily a hustle guy. When he giving you all that energy in every facet of his game, I think people just feed off that. They're like, "Damn, look who got on the floor." That mean he, to me, that mean he trusts his teammates and he trusts Kyrie because he ain't yeah. got to carry the whole load. You know, Luca got to give you something every quarter, usually to win. Now he yeah. don't. You know, no, nah, it took him a while. And here's the problem, or here's the issue: we all knew if we keep it real, it was going to take Luca and Kyrie a minute to get to figure out how to play with each other. I didn't know. That. I didn't know that. I was. I was skeptical. You know. I was. I was very skeptical of of Kyrie coming here. Um, now I love well, I mean, it. Yeah. Well, I mean, from the standpoint of whatever his off the field issue or whatever his team with other issues is, 
it's going to take two superstars a minute yeah. to figure out how to play with each other and so that everybody's comfortable. Because remember, when he first got here, they lost some games because they were trying to be polite. Hey, yeah. Joe, you take the last. No, yeah. shot. You take yeah. it, man. Joe, I insist. I took yeah. the last one. You take this one. You had and to so decide, yeah. You can't play like that. This just got to be, hey, here's how we playing. Well, now they really understand how to play. You can tell from the substitution patterns. You know, kid gives Luca off the start of the fourth quarter. Kyrie said, "Okay, it's not. It's my time to cook." Luca coming back with about six minutes left. I'm gonna take two minutes off. I'm gonna come back with four, and then we're gonna close it out with us both on the court these last four or five minutes. I it's thought, something like that. I thought it would be a problem with them on the court because they both ball dominant. But I forgot. You know, it's easy to forget with all the stuff surrounding Kyrie that he was off the ball in Cleveland. With LeBron, with LeBron, and he and he played just fine. So you know, it, it, you're right. They 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 had to get together off the off, you know had to get out. He had to get stuff together off the court. But man, it, it's a beautiful thing right now. Watch them two dudes play together. No, they, they're playing really good basketball, and I think it's clear uh, that they enjoy playing with each other. That they got a lot of respect for each other. And all that matters uh, when you're trying to win games against other equally talented teams. It's those intangibles that matter. The only downside is Derek Lively is out with a bruised knee. Uh, he may miss a couple of weeks, which, would, which will mean four or five games. That's part of the reason why they lost to the Warriors, because the bench got outscored something like 31-13. Yeah. Um, they got to get more from the bench. I don't know how that is because, I mean, it ain't like Dwight Powell finna come in here and average you know, 10 points and six rebounds. Uh, so I don't know how they survived that, but, uh, you know, every team got injuries, every team got issues. Don't nobody want to hear about them. But, uh, the Mavericks and the stars are both streaking and rolling as we head into the postseason. And that means good times for us. Now let's, uh, take a trip around the block, bro. So I can get this off my chest. Um, I'm going to bitch and moan and complain right now. I try not to do that too often. I really do. But I was exasperated with Bally's the other day, man. Bally Southwest. Like, I didn't want to spend no money on them to, from the rip. And I refused to spend. I, I go with them month by month. I added them in December for what? I was out of town. What'd you say? I thought you added them for the Mavericks, right? No, in December I added them. Okay. And I added them because um, my son and I were in Buffalo for the Bills game, and it was the same day that the state high school championship games were going on, and we wanted to watch them. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get the package for the month, and then we can watch the, uh, watch the games. And it worked pretty good. wasn't perfect. And then with a couple of months left in the basketball season, that's when I added them, added the package. I said, hey, the playoffs are coming up for Stars and Mavericks, and then the Rangers are going to get started. And so we need to, I need to watch the Mavericks so I know what I'm talking about come playoffs. And so I got the package. I also wanted to watch the Rangers when they were starting. Dude, I tried to watch the Rangers game the other day, man. And I couldn't get it. <clears throat> and now I'm mad. So I keep trying. And I can't get it. And I'm checking out all my thing, all my stuff on Bally's. I'm like, did I? I can't remember. Did I end the subscription already? Maybe that's the problem. Nope. Still got the subscription. And uh, I never could. And then they, then something popped up that said, oh, you don't have access to the Rangers, just the Mavericks and the Stars. Wow. I'm like, what kind of sense do that make? And so I got so frustrated, I was like, you know what, bump this. Although I said another word. And then I just, I canceled my, I canceled my subscription right then. I said, I'm not, I'm just not going to do this with y'all, man. They had some of the worst service ever, and then you can't find nobody. And, you know, I hate these automated things. I had this problem last week with something else I was dealing with. At some point, can I talk to a person? Just, (laughs) I mean... All of this punch this button and this button. I need to talk to somebody. Yeah, yeah, the chat, Everything the chat don't box fit. and all yeah, that. Yeah, dog. man, I get tired of it. Yeah. Everything don't fit into the cookie cutter thing. 
Sometimes you need to talk to somebody and say, this is my particular issue that I need solved. Yeah. Uh, and they couldn't do it, so they lost my business. I was like, bump this. Okay, I, you, I was like, F that. I'm through with it. Uh, and I hope to gosh that they get this thing figured out, man, because they are the worst. All right? Just the absolute worst. Well, I, don't understand, I, I don't understand how such a raggedy-ass company can be associated with professional sports. That's supposed I think to be it's the because, best thing. Now, I don't know this for a fact. I think it's because at one time, they weren't a raggedy-ass company. There was a good company. Maybe they got new management. Maybe some of their key know. players left. They got hired by other companies. I don't know. All I know is right now, they ain't worth two dead flies pushed together. Pushed together. James no. Donaldson. Ray Donaldson. <laughs> Ray Donaldson. James Donaldson uh, was the center. All right. Yeah, they're just not worth anything. Both of them were centers. <laughs> Not worth a damn. Yeah. So, um, you know, so it's very frustrating. Here's the only good thing for me about it. When the playoffs start, we don't need balance. Okay? Right. Because all the games be on national TV. Now, you just had to say, I mean, and you're going to stay up late to watch them anyway. Uh, so you just had to stay up. But they're going to be on networks, and so you can get them all. Uh, that doesn't help with the Rangers. Um, so, now this is just my suggestion to y'all. If you are tired of ballets, and I can't imagine that you're not, and I don't do this very often, but I'm going to do it now. The MLB app for I think it's $3.99 a month is fantastic. Now, I don't say that about very many sports apps. It's fantastic. There might be another additional charge if you want the audio so that you can listen to the Rangers games with Eric Nadell and Matt, who are both in uh, Jared Sandler, who are, who are all terrific. Okay. I mean, they really are. Um, but the app is fantastic. It gives you like pitch by pitch, tells you everything you want to know about the pitch from the speed, you know, to anything you would want to know about the pitch. It'll tell you, you look the stats up. They have a little batter in there. So it's got some graphics. Um, but here's the thing. As you're watching the game, whenever there's a key play, whether it's an, somebody made a terrific play on defense or somebody had a big hit, whether it's a, a, a run scoring hit or whatever, somebody made a great catch, they'll put the highlight in like within two or three minutes. And so you can literally follow the game on your phone or your iPad and see the key highlights. And you like, I damn near watched the game even though it wasn't on. And so it's a it's the best alternative I've seen to watching a game live. And then after a certain point, they'll put up the condensed version of the game. And so if you're like me and you just want to go back and watch it, you can get up the next morning, watch the whole game if that's what you choose to do in about, uh, I don't know, probably about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Mm. Or they got this thing called the wrap, which they do about, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour after the game. That tells you that literally in about a two and a half minute package shows you all the key stats and all the key plays. And you can watch that probably 20 or 30 minutes after the game, something like that. Anyway, the MLB app is a great alternative to this BS that Bally's got going on. Okay, that's all golden right there. I like that. Yeah, because yeah. it's so you can't find the games. Well, yeah. so this is so we got to talk about alternatives. Because, you know, the Bally's in their app, they just poop to me, dog. Well, for, no for us people, for the casual fan, Ranger fan, that want to become more of a Ranger fan, yeah, that's good shit right there because, you know, we got to be able to catch the game. Yeah. You know, no, it's, that's, it's, uh, it's, it's like back in the day, listening to the game while you're doing something else. Exactly. You know, listening to it, hey, I'm doing this right here. I'm working on this right here. I got exactly. the headphones on on the lawnmower. And I'm listening to the. I mean, it's, it's man. I, I I remember my grandpa used to sit in the backyard and do a lot of stuff, productive stuff, me included, while we listen to the Ranger game. No, man, uh, I do that now because I do a lot of multitasking while I'm while I'm researching this book project that I'm working on. So. Roger that. <clears throat> so it keeps my mind. It gives me something to do because the research is somewhat monotonous, and so it allows me to uh, keep my mind occupied a little bit. Uh. I sent you a text this morning to say, Apple got me, did it get you? Um, you know, I have a love-hate relationship with Apple and Apple products. Hmm. Like, I love Apple products. I love the phone. 
I done had in my lifetime, I done probably had, I'm not even exaggerating, man, probably 10 different iPads. Um, I loved them because you could be on your phone and the inf- information is up to the second on your iPad. And if you had a MacBook, which I had for a long time, it'd be up to the second on the MacBook. So you can go from device to device to device and everything's the same and you can work like that if you like me. And I thought it was great. But Apple is also about some bullshit, you know, in terms of their accessories. Like, how mad did you get when you had, everybody had five phone cords to all your phones, and then they came up with the, oh, now every phone works off the USB-C. So now all those charges you got, those those are no longer, I mean, they ain't worth nothing. Yeah, that's a problem. You know? Definitely a problem. Or, how about this? You have to get the updates because if you don't get the updates after a certain point, your phone won't work. They make you do this. And then sometimes they change the inner workings of the phone every now, every so often that you damn near got to get another phone for your phone to work properly. They're making you do it, even if it's even if you don't know that they're making you do it. And uh, I read recently that uh, there's some kind of class action lawsuit involved in that. Uh, But the thing that got me yesterday, man, I got about four or five chargers. And I'm like a lot of people. I got sick of paying $30 for a cable to charge my phone. I said, I'm going on Amazon, get six cables for $8. And I always have a cable and they work. But this is what I noticed. They don't charge your phone as fast. And two, when you get these arbitrary cables... They just stop working sometimes just for just because they ain't worth a damn. And so yesterday, man, I'm mad because I, I got I literally had five phone cables in my house, dog. None of them were working. My phone was staying on three and four and five and six percent because I could never get it charged <coughs> long enough to do anything. And so, dog, I made that I made that run, man. I sadly drove to Target. And plunked down $35 for a damn phone charger. What? Just a cable, man. Not even a block. Just a cable. The fire wire is not working for you or something? Nah, man. And then, or the lightning uh, wire, whatever they call it. Nah, the charges I mean, are not working. You had to pay $35. Why? Yeah. Because the ones I keep getting off of Amazon for cheap don't work long. Oh, they don't. They don't. Yeah. We talked about They're that the other day. they you got to have that badass charger for your iPhone. I can't yeah. complain about Apple too much because I came over from Android. And Android, for all the things I do with my iPads and stuff like that, like my drones and stuff, with Android, I had to I had to, I had to download 50 drivers to get stuff to work. Right. Well, with Apple, it's maybe one update, boom, and, then, and I'm flying. Or I'm doing whatever I want to do. Right. And then the way you integrate everything, the MacBook, I have a MacBook Pro, MacBook, iPad, phone, all of that stuff. It works pretty good. I don't know. Yeah. I just, I don't, like you said, the accessories and stuff. But it's, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the functionality is fantastic, but them accessories, they just yeah. be killing you, man. Yeah, the charger. But yeah. I keep telling you, I was bitching and moaning about it, but guess what? I put that new cable on there, um, and my phone went from zero to to 75% in about 18 minutes. With yeah. that BS cable I've got on Amazon, it would take about 45 minutes for it to go that far. Maybe a little bit longer. So it's a faster, better cord. And, uh, you know, I, I, I bitched him on the whole time, but, you know, something you just need. It's like, I try not to do this because to me, it's like bitching and moaning about how much gas costs. It don't matter. You need gas. It depend on what you drive. When I had my dually, people say, "Hey, man, is the is the, is the, is the fuel cost high?" I said, "If you worried about fuel costs, don't drive a dually." No, you're right. You know who else finds that out, man? My son, his car was in the shop, and he was uh, driving his mother's Escalade for about a month. Oh yeah, and about a week and a half into it, he called me up, Dad. Why is one gas like three ninety and the other gas is like three twenty? <laughs> hey man, 
You want all them luxury cars. You told yeah. me you want this, yeah. you want that. Yeah. Luxury cars require luxury gas, my son. Yeah. He's like, this is this is this is crazy. I said, hey, man. Now you know. Yeah. And uh that's the difference between premium and regular, my friend. Oh yeah, we I got said, it. why you think I got a Honda Accord all this time, dog? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, because uh, because of those gas racks. But that was me bitching and moaning about my accessories on my Apple stuff because I spent about eighty dollars yesterday, and uh, I was I was sad that I had to spend it just to get some damn cords and charges. But uh, that's life in the big city, man. Yeah, once you do it, it's done. But yeah, yeah, those cheap ones don't work that well. No, I they mean I, I literally got yeah. five or six of them around the house, and none of them yeah. was working. Yeah. None of them, and I was I interesting, was, dude. I was dropping f bombs like I was over a foreign country yesterday. Yeah, I bought some. I bought some AirPods here recently, and uh, oh. my daughter talked me into it, and uh, they pretty cool. I I lost one. One fell out of my ear yesterday. Right, and I must have kicked that thing all over the kitchen. I got the locator, and it was like you right on top of it, man. Where the hell is it? Then I played the little sound. Damn. Well, I'm just saying, I finally found it, but you did the locator, and it was like. It was a game if I would. It, be, it would be a fun game if I wasn't so damn frustrated, you know. Because that's, that's my biggest fear: losing them damn things. And hell, I looked for it so hard, I actually kicked it under something. No, so, I feel you on that. Oh well, that's, yeah. Uh, that's week's trip. That's our trip around the block this week. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I know what I was going to say. Uh, this has been big in the news lately. But if you're ever involved in an accident, it's not your fault. Any kind of commercial vehicle. You know, it doesn't just have to be like an 18-wheeler. It can be anybody's commercial vehicle. If you're involved in an accident, somebody else's negligence has caused you some harm. What you got to do pronto, like ASAP, pick up the phone, call 972-934-8900. And when they pick up, you just say, hey, here's my situation. Here's the details. What do you think? And I'm telling you, that phone call, which don't cost nothing, could change your life. Real talk. Because if Greening Law brings you on as a client, it's the best news you'll ever get. And here's why. They handle everything from start to finish. Why? They want you focused on two things, healing and renewal. Get your mind right, get your body right, get your life back. That's really what they want you focused on. And to make sure that happens, they take care of everything. When I say everything, I mean everything. So you need a doctor. They got you. Set up the appointment, you go there. You need a chiropractor. They got you. Set up an appointment. You go there. You need a specialist. They got you. They set up the appointment. You go there. I mean, it don't really get no simpler than that. All right? Remember, I just told y'all, consultation's free. Here's the other kicker. They don't get paid unless you get paid. I said they don't get paid unless you get paid. It doesn't work out any better than that. So you don't ever have to wonder, where do I fit on the priority list? How big am I a client? Am I, am I important? Am I not important? Am I top of the list, bottom of the list? No, you're at the top because they ain't getting paid unless you get paid. So greeting love. It's a place to call. If you're ever involved in some kind of accident, that's not your fault. Somebody else's negligence has caused you some harm. Call greening law, 972-934-8900. Let them help you. They're ride or die. They walk you through the process. Because the process can be long. It can be intimidating. It can be scary. It can be frustrating. All of that stuff, man. But Greening Law walks you through it. Step by step by step. You're never alone. They got the flashlight to tell you when to run, when to walk, when to slow down, when to turn left, when to turn right. They handle all of that. All you literally have to do is follow the directions that Robert Greening and the Green Team provides. Do that. And it's a good day for you. So that's Greening Law. Uh, we also can't do the show without my friends at Smoky John's Barbecue, 1820 West Mockingbird. Remember, you can always follow the show. What we need to do, uh, we may make it. We got about another week and a half, two weeks before we tell you what's, what's coming down in May. It's a big deal. Um, go check out the YouTube channel. The Real Jacques Talk. Subscribe. Leave a review. And uh, tell us you love us. Please. We'd appreciate that. You can also follow the show on IG at The Real Jacques Talk. You can find me on Twitter, X, whatever we're calling it these days, at uh, JJT Journalist. I am Jean-Jacques Taylor is the handle. Don't forget, if you think you follow me, you probably don't. 
because my account was deleted, taken over. Somebody stole it. It's a long story that I need to get in and tell y'all one of these days. Uh, hey, go download Clapper, similar to TikTok. I just got a notification from Clapper. See, they be listening. Uh, that's where you can find a lot of my Cowboys content, do videos over there. I am Jean-Jacques Taylor's the handle on, on uh, Clapper. It's very similar to TikTok, similar platform. That's where all the cool kids are these days. So follow me on Clapper. I am Jean-Jacques Taylor. Uh, for Big Joe and the Big Rig, until we chat again, you guys be blessed.